Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So as promised, this is part two of creating a college system using um, Python and MySQL. So in the last tutorial, we did um, a admin account which was able to register students, teachers, and it was also able to delete any student or teacher account. So in this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and actually code a bit more and code up our teacher account so the user that already exists on the system as a teacher can log in into their account and can mark or view the register so let's first of all what we want to do is go ahead and open up sam so we're going to be um, creating this project backward as i said before so let's open up Zamp. You need to make sure that you have Zamp installed already. So do that if you haven't already. Also, if you haven't watched part one of this tutorial, it's going to be linked in the description. So I recommend you do that first. So once you have done that, what you want to do is click on start for Apache and start for MySQL. Then click on the admin tab for MySQL and give it a moment to load up. So we have to go ahead and create the databases we need before we actually do anything in today's tutorial. So in the last tutorial, we created a database called college, which had a database called users. This table pretty much stored um, the teacher accounts and the student accounts. So as you may see right now, it is empty. That's because there isn't any teacher or students accounts in here. So that's the main reason it's empty. So what we want to do is also have another table called um, attendance, which is where the teachers are going to be marking registers. So let's call this attendance. Now obviously the system is not foolproof or by any means ready to be deployed. It's just to kind of refresh our memories on uh, how to use MySQL with Python and how to create a basic command line application. So don't expect this to be um, usable in any scenario, it's just a fun project that we're doing. So we're going to have um, four fields, one's going to be ID which is going to be an auto increment field which will um, do a plus one each time a new record is added, another one for username, another one for the date of the register. And lastly, another field for status. So this status is going to store whether the user was present, absent or late. Cool. So let's go ahead and scroll to the right and click on AI, which is auto increment for our ID field. The rest of the fields don't need that. So once we're done with that, we need to go back, change the username into variable character. Same for the date and the same for the status as well cool so once you're done with that just mention the values over here i'm going to go with the max value available which is 255 obviously it's not good practice but just since this is just a chill tutorial i'm just going to go ahead and do that and then i'm going to click on go so once i'm done with that we should have a new table oh wait that's the wrong button we're going to click on save actually once i'm done with that we should have a new table called attendance with the following fields id username date and status Cool, so we've done the backend-ish now, so we need to go ahead and create a front-end using Python. So let's go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. And I should have my file from last time. Okay, let's see, file, open file, close this off, open file, uh, desktop. I'm gonna just quickly navigate to the file I had coding, um, I coded last time in the last tutorial. Should be here somewhere, there it is. Cool, so we got up to this code in the last tutorial. Now what you want to do is go into your function, the main function right here. And in the main function last time, we coded our admin. We created an authorization admin and an admin session function. So in this tutorial, we're going to be um, creating the teacher login. So the teacher would be allowed to log in as well. So let's get rid of this print statement for teacher login. And instead, we're going to type in authorize um, teacher. Now, obviously, it's going to complain saying that this function doesn't exist, but we're going to go ahead and create that function right now. So whenever the user clicks on option two from our main menu, which is login as teacher, the authorized teacher function will be run. So let's go ahead and create that function. Now, let's just do it above um, authorized admin. So authorize teacher. And then let's do what we want to do is go ahead and probably print a blank line just to make sure that um, we're leaving some space. Print black line. Then we can do print uh, teachers login just so that the user knows what part of the application they're on. Another blank line. And then we need to gather the username from the teacher. Username, oops, username. And then we need to gather the password as well. So I'm going to copy this line, paste it down here. 
and change username into password. Oh, what's wrong with my typing today? Okay, and I'm changing username to password so that I can take the username and password input from the teacher. Now, once this password and username input has been taken, we're going to run a query to our database. So query uh, values equals username, username and password. Now we're just creating, we just created a variable right here called query values, which is going to store all the values that are going to be passed in our query. So we're going to be using this variable in a moment once we create our query. So to run our query, we had a um, object that was called command handler that we used in the first tutorial. So let's type in command handler dot execute so that we can execute our query. And then I'm going to say select um, star, we select everything, select star from our users tables that we had in the last tutorial. So select star from users where username equals um, percentage s because we are going to be using a string formatter and password equals percentage s and privilege equals in here now we want to type in um, we're going to be typing in teacher because the privilege needs to be a teacher because since we are logging in as a teacher we can't just log in as a student so now we've said select star which means select everything from users where username is going to be passed as username and password is going to be passed as the password um, input that we just gathered now at the end of this line what you want to do is type in comma and query values so what that's going to do is going to pass the username and password in place of this um, percentage s so that this query is complete okay what did i do there hmm. somehow managed to come all the way down there for some reason okay let's go ahead and find the function i was just coding okay here it is so we just finished our command handler now once we're done we need to do an if statement so we say if command handler dot row count is less or equal to zero which means if the results that are returned are pretty much zero or none we say login not recognized else which means if it is greater we are going to print welcome teacher just for now and then we're going to replace this with a function for the teacher session later let's just see if this works so let's run this up quickly now i'm going to go back in my database to check if i have any accounts so as you see right here it's blank so if i try to log in right now it's just going to not let me log in so first of all i'm going to log in as an admin so this is from last tutorial so i'm going to click on three log in as admin and i'm going to type in admin password and then i'm going to register a new teacher so i'm going to press two teacher username is going to be Johan and password is going to be password of course very secure so Johan has been registered as a teacher now i'm going to go ahead and log out so press five now i'm back on my main menu so i can press two to log in as a teacher i'm going to type in Johan and password i'm going to type in password and as you see right here it says welcome teacher so that means it has recognized my username and password now if i go back to my database and refresh this uh, as you see right here, it says your hand and password, which means we did um, when we run our query, it did re return a result because there is an entry based on our query in here. So now let's try and log in using a gibberish username and password. So I'm going to log in as teacher again. Gibberish, gibberish. It says login not recognized. So that's working perfectly. Cool. So let's go ahead and close this off. And let's now change this from welcome teacher to teacher session. So that's going to be a function we create now. Obviously, it's going to complain because that function doesn't exist. But in the teacher session, the teacher is going to have their very own menu where they can mark the register, view all registers they have marked in the in the past and log out. Cool. So as, I, as you may have noticed, it's pretty simple what we're doing right here. So just to keep the tutorial short and simple. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create that function right above admin session. So uh, define teacher session. And now in here, I'm going to do print blank line. Okay, instead of doing all of this, I'm going to go ahead and just copy it from here. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, let's go and copy. 
and then let's go ahead and paste. So obviously there's a few things that change here. Now this admin menu is no longer an admin menu, it's a teacher's menu. Because it's a teacher's login. Now in here it needs to be, first option is going to be mark student register. Second option is going to be view register. And the last option of course is going to be log out since we can break through from the loop. Then once we're done with that, we're going to have to gather the user input. So user option equals input string option. It's not option, option. And then we'll say if user option equals one, which is teachers, um, which means marking the register. What we want to do is print a blank line. Then we're going to print mark student register as like a little header. And then we need to do a command handler query. So what we want to do first off is actually find out the names of the students that are on our users table so that we can later grab that name, put it into our attendance table and then mark it as present or absent. Cool. So select. Now we only need the username from our users table. So we're going to do select username from users where privilege equals student because we only want students because we obviously we don't need to mark the register for any teacher accounts only student accounts so since we have that what we want to do next is store the records into this variable called records equals command handler dot fetch all so what that's going to do is it's going to fetch all the records that are returned from this query right here now obviously we're going to be needing a for loop to be displaying those records. So before we do that, we need to know the date for which the user wants to store this record. So date equals input string date um, and then dd month and then year. That's going to be the format we're going to be requesting the user for the date they want to mark this register for. And then we just do for records, for record in records, um, we want to do record equals string record dot replace we have to replace a single quote with a blank then we also need to replace the um, comma with a blank we also need to replace the opening bracket with a blank and lastly we need to be replacing the closing bracket with a blank now we're doing all this because when the record is returned, it's returned as a tuple and then it has a bracket, a comma and a closing bracket. So when we do this replace right here, it's only going to return the name and none of the other stuff that we don't need. So this is kind of essential to strip it down. Cool. So now I'm going to make a comment here about what the different statuses are. So present, absent and let's do late. So that's the three statuses that the user can set for the different students. Cool. So we're going to do status equals input string. So for each um, user that the um, loop uh, prints, we need to set a status. So we're going to do status equals um, and then we're going to ask status for. Then we're going to do a plus string record. So status for it's going to ask what student the status is being set for. So it's going to tell the user what student is the status is going to be set for. And then we're going to be presenting the options that are available. P A M L. And then let's ask the user to give us an input. Cool. So once that's done, we need to set a new variable for query values because we are about to insert all of these values into our attendance table. So string record is one of the um, first values and then we need date and then we also need status which are just variables that we have here here and over here so we're just storing it all into this um, one variable called query value so that we can pass it into our insert query later so we do command handler dot execute and now we're going to run our insert query where we're going to insert all this information into our attendance table. So insert into attendance. Um, then we need to mention what fields we are going to be inserting. We don't need to insert the ID. So we're just inserting username, date and status. 
and then we need to be providing it with the actual values that are going to be entered into these fields so we need to type in values and then in here we're just going to be passing in um, blank string uh, formatters because we're going to be passing in the values in the form of the variable we had called query values so the first uh, first field is going to be um, the what's the it's going to be the name so the username variable that we have over here second field is going to be the date variable that we have here and the last field is the status variable that we have right here which is going to be perfectly fine so once we're done with that we want to make sure that we're committing the changes by typing in database.commit um, that will save and refresh all the changes and then lastly we print record which is the name of the student that just got um, marked and then marked as plus status cool so that's done now if i run this hopefully everything should work just fine and we should be able to mark the register for the student so let's run this up and if i go log in as teacher johan password now i've successfully logged in and i have my teachers menu so i'm going to go ahead and mark the register now if you see right here is asking me for the date so i'm going to go ahead and put in today's date which is i i believe 21st yeah it is 21st um, of august 2020 and then it's okay so the reason why it hasn't shown me any students is because if i go back to my database here go into users there is no students so there's only one teacher that's been registered in here so we actually need to register a few students onto our system first in order to mark the register otherwise it just returns a blank um, loop of nothing and then it returns us back to the menu so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this off uh, close this off run this again and we're going to log in as admin to register a few students first so let's log in as admin password and then let's register students so i'm going to go ahead and call my first student matthew with the password of it doesn't matter because we're not going to be logging into the student account anyway let's register another student let's call him uh josh password gibberish is fine and one more student let's call it um mark cool so we've got now three students that are registered we can confirm that by going ahead and refreshing our database so if you see right here, we have Matthew, Josh and Mark, which have been registered as students. Now this had been done in the last tutorial, which is why I recommend watching it. If you already have, then that's perfect. You understand how this works. So now if I go ahead and log out by pressing 5, I am returned back to my main menu. Uh, wait, what did I press? Oh, I pressed delete existing teacher by accident, did I? Yeah, I pressed 4 by accident, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that. And then it says user not found let's press 5 this time and log out cool so now i'm back on my main menu let's log in as teacher johan password and now i can mark my student register my date is 21st of august 2020 and um okay so this time as well for some reason it hasn't done it so let's try and run this again i'm not sure why run again so login as teacher mm, Johan password okay it didn't type in the right one Johan password uh, mark student register 2108 hmm that's weird it's not letting me for some weird reason so I'm gonna go ahead and debug this seems like there's been a logical error somewhere so let's take a look so for record in records it should technically be in this right here so select username from users where privilege equals oh i see so instead it's not privilege equals students it's privilege equals student because that's my typo right there let's get rid of that make sure it's only student not students because otherwise it's never going to return any results anyway because we never register a student as students we register them as a student so singular so two uh johan password now let's mark the register for the date 21st of august so 21st of august 2020 cool finally so status for matthew um and then it says present absent or late so i'm gonna go ahead and mark matthew as present today 
then it says my fear has been marked as present then it moves on to the next um status or the next student so i'm gonna mark josh as absent and we're gonna mark um mark as let's go late cool so once all the students have been marked the this information is saved into the attendance database now i can prove that by going into my database clicking on my attendance table right here and it, as you see it says Matthew was present, Josh was absent and Mark was late and so and so date is shown as well. So in our next uh, function that we create or the next command that we create we need to um, pretty much just show all these records so the username, date and the status which is going to be showing the user the register. Cool so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so to do this we need an elif statement so we are going to quickly go ahead and do an elif statement. So we do, what indent am I looking at? So it's right here, cool. So elif, if I can get caps off, elif user option equals to, we're gonna print a blank line. And after that, what I wanna do is print ring viewing all student registers um, and then we're going to have to run our query so command handler to execute a simple query of select username oops select username comma we want also the date and we also want the status let's give this a bit of space we want the username date and status from the attendance table so we're pretty much selecting all the records and we're only grabbing the username, date and status. So we're telling it we don't want the ID field. Cool. And now whatever results are grabbed, we're going to be stored, storing them into records, which is going to be command handler dot fetch all. So it can fetch all the records. Now let's do a print statement and say displaying, oops, displaying all registers. And then let's do a for loop. So for record and records print um, record so that should do the trick so now if I run this and we can we would actually be able to view the um, registers if we did it correctly so your hand password and I have a teachers menu press 2 and as you see right here displaying all registers where Matthew on the 21st of August was present Josh on the 21st of August was absent and Mark on the 21st of August was late Cool, so this function has been pretty successfully created as well. Now lastly, the logout function, which is the easiest of all. What we need to do is type in, go ahead and type in, oops, elif, user option equals three, which is for logout. We just break from this loop. So when we break from this loop, we'll be returned to our main loop from our main function. And then that's the main menu. Cool, and then lastly, we do else print, no valid option was selected just in case the user doesn't type one, two, three and anything outside that range. So let's um, run this to see if we can actually log out. Let's click on two, Johan, password. Uh, okay, I didn't log in properly. And then let's click on log out, so three. And as you see right here, we have logged out and it says, welcome to the college system. So guys, that brings an end to today's tutorial. Hope you guys have enjoyed um, coding the teacher pits of this um, college management system. Hope you're looking forward to tomorrow's tutorial, which is going to be showing you how to finish this um, series and pretty much code the student dashboard so that the student can log in and do a few functions as well. And if you guys would like to donate directly to the channel, you can do so by either becoming a patron on my Patreon page, which is um, stated in the description or you can purchase a super chat emoji or highlighted message when this video premieres. Thank you guys once again for all the support that you guys have been showing me. I'm really grateful for it. Um, do consider joining the Discord channel for a load of fun. Also follow up my socials. It is great that you guys have been sharing my channel so much. I would appreciate if you guys do the same because I'm trying to grow my channel. And guys, I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace.